I've never before watched the Rubin Report, but because of my recent interest in Jordan Peterson, I happened upon one of his episodes. I will link it down below. First of all, I need to express my appreciation for Dr. Peterson. I haven't yet read his book. It is next on my list, but I have watched his lectures, and it wasn't until this episode of the Rubin Report that I came to have a better understanding of his views on God as it pertains to him personally. I had only ever heard him say that he wasn't comfortable making the statement that he believes in God, although he does seem to believe that it is reasonable that God exists. In this video, he and Ben Shapiro have an interesting discourse on Christianity, which I found frustrating at times, seeing as there was not a Christian at the table. This brings us back to our little video here, which none of these men will likely see, to provide a Christian viewpoint on a few of the matters discussed. I guess the most important statement made by Dr. Peterson, which can't be left unanswered, would be what he thinks is the central idea of Christianity. The idea he relays to Dave Rubin and Ben Shapiro is this. The cross is merely an example of what every human being should be doing. We all need to voluntarily accept the burden of suffering, and through this suffering, we will achieve the level of personal or biological development we were originally created for. He is partially right. The concept of suffering being crucial to human growth and development is in the Bible, but that's not the purpose of the cross. Ben Shapiro rightly corrects him on this point, but then they both go on to mock the paradox of grace versus works, failing to give the matter any real exploration. They go on to say that Jesus is the difference between Judaism and Christianity, but how can this be? From the very beginning of the Gospel of John, the Bible clearly states, In the beginning was Jesus. He is the Creator God. Therefore, how could the Old Testament be void of His presence? It, in fact, is not. The Old Testament is replete with pictures of Christ and His atoning work on the cross. The ram provided in place of Isaac, the blood on the doorposts at Passover, and the suffering servant described in Isaiah 53 are the first three to come to mind. The difference does not lie in the nature of God, because God is unchanging. The difference lies in our access to Him, effectively demonstrated by the tearing of the veil that separated His people from the Holy of Holies in the temple the moment Jesus died. Jeremiah 31, 31-34 reads, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. But this shall be a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people." And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and will remember their sin no more. Aside from the clear description here of a law written on the hearts of men instead of Mount Sinai stone, is that last statement, For they shall all know me. Sidlow Baxter said, Some knowledge is interesting. Some knowledge is useful, some knowledge is exceedingly important, and some knowledge is spiritual, but the greatest knowledge is knowing Him. Isn't it striking how impartial that is? The common view we hold today is that any knowledge of a high degree of importance would be exclusive to those with a greater intellect, but the greatest knowledge, knowing Him, is attainable by anyone. Dr. Peterson claims that he lives as if there is a God, but that's not in fact true. He is in reality living as a secular humanist, filtering all knowledge through his own logic. In doing this, he is deciding on his own morality, not trusting in the God of creation to decide. The only way to truly do this is to know the God of creation, and that is exactly why he provided a way. 
Dr. Peterson likes to quote Matthew 7 as justification for his refusal to name Jesus as Lord. Yet somehow he doesn't see himself in the camp of the doers who don't know the Lord personally. Never in the Bible is a vacillation between gods acceptable. As Joshua says in chapter 24, Choose this day who you will serve.